This is Twit. So let, let me just say that uh, first, the, the move towards uh, immersive sound, 3D sound, whatever you want to call it, is really exciting for us. I've, I've always been a fan of improving the spatial resolution of the playback environment to match what was originally thought of in the production environment. And um, that's a move in the, in definitely in the right direction. Um, the, the rooms we've completed recently with uh, Atmos have yielded results to the client uh, that were, were fantastic. They were like, oh my God, this is so amazing. I, I never want to leave home anymore. It's, it's this is great. <laughs> um, so it, with our intention of, of locking people in their homes and, and like, like being stuck in front of the, the very big screen, the two, three, whatever it is to one screen, we're succeeding. And so we're, we're really excited. Um, the addition of the ceiling speakers, the upper wall speakers, the extra speakers does introduce some challenges um, in terms of layout, in terms of integration with lighting, uh, architectural elements, and of course, uh, relative to the acoustical character of the room. So one one question that's uh, actually been up a lot is, well, what what should what should the dispersion character of a speaker be? for those added channels, the extra ceiling channels, the extra wide channels, what should that be? Which way should they point? And what should the acoustical character of the room be for a 11 channel, a 18 channel, a 24 channel room compared to what we've been doing all along in the five and seven point one channel uh, world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in the category of this just in, I was actually at Dolby Labs this morning uh, talking to some of the folks over there if any of them are listening, hello. Uh, Warren Mansfield spent uh, a lot of time with me this morning. Thank you very much. And uh, we, we talked about this. We said, you know, what, it, it all comes back to what, uh, what did the director intend? What did the sound designer intend? What environment were they in when they were experiencing the final mix of the movie? And what does it take to replicate that in, in your, your personal home theater, your home cinema, your private screening room? Uh, your monument to audio video in your in your house. So, <laughs> I've got I've got some interesting data, um, and I'd love to show you some of the things uh, that have come out of that. Uh, talk Please. a little bit about some of the some of the conversations, and also um, I'd love to share some of our experience in the design of home cinemas for Atmos. Now that they're that the rooms are done, and you know what we've noticed from the engineering, the thinking, the building, and then the final listening. That um, sounds great to me. Also, just to, to clarify, uh, my, f my firm uh, has a few different activities, but w one of the things we do is we, we get hired as, you call it, theater consultants, um, which is an engineering group that will design the sound, the picture, the layout, the interiors, the seating, all of the more technical parts of uh, high quality home cinema to make sure that it all works out well. So that's uh, that's what what we do when we're not sitting around doing podcasts. <laughs> all right, very good. Uh, but you're more. It sounds to me like you're more concerned with performance than you are with decor. Would that be a fair assessment? Uh, y yes and no. Actually, uh, ultimately, our goal is to achieve a certain type of performance, uh, and that type of performance is actually not that subjective. It's objective in that what it's wanting to do is to replicate the sound designer's intent. And uh, I'm lucky enough to know a lot of sound designers. I could, you know, pick up the phone and call folks who have won many Academy Awards for Best Movie and say, hey, you know, what were you trying to do with this movie? I, you know, I'm hearing this sound here and this thing there. Is that what you wanted to do or not? And we can have a frank discussion about what their intention was. So. Performance-wise, we're trying to replicate the sound designer or the director's intent, but we're trying to do that in an environment that doesn't look like an audio lab. Uh, <laughs> I'm often in arguments with people that go, I, I don't care what it looks like, just make it sound good and look good. It's like, well, it also has to be a comfortable environment to be in. When you walk in, I don't want the audience to have this cold, uninviting feeling. The room needs to feel good to be in because in your unconscious, that registers as a place where you have sound comfort. You can sit in there and go, hey, I, I like this. I'm, I'm ready for my movie. So we, we do worry about acoustics. We worry about optics. We worry about equipment, reliability, functionality. And we do worry about aesthetic design and make sure that the room uh, looks good. Mm -hmm. Uh, that must mean that you often work with uh, interior designers. And I've heard other installers uh, 
talk about working with interior designers and how they often don't understand the needs of the performance side of things. Uh, do you find that to be true or have, have you worked, most of the theater designers you've worked with, interior designers, I mean, uh, are amenable to uh, you saying, well, we need to do it this way because of the sound or we need to do it that way because of the picture? Um, I, I actually like, I love working with interior designers and I, and I say that because they're a, a class of folks that's either inherently or trained to be able to, to visualize what a finished result is going to be um, and in complete abstraction, pick colors, pick shapes, pick forms, and you know, draw it on a piece of paper and go, here's what it is. And once it gets built, it looks gorgeous. And I'm often stunned by uh, starting from what's called a color boards, which is this little you know, piece of foam core with a bunch of color samples and carpet samples and pieces of wood on them. And looking at that and going, I, I don't know, I have no idea what that's gonna look like. You know, I see all these different things. And then it gets all built up and I'm like, wow, that looks amazing. How did you know that was going to look so good? And they're like, that's what I do. That's so, their job. That's know. their job. Um, so um, I have a lot of respect for what they, what they do. Um, I'm very excited about what they do. And what in our work, we collaborate. We just go, well, you, you know, you have your aesthetic vision and we have our uh, optical and acoustical vision. Let's work together and make this thing a, a fantastic result. And you know, just through cooperation, communication, and, and collaboration, we, we end up with that famous equation of, you know, one plus one equally being equal to three, which uh, otherwise you end up with these ugly rooms or rooms that sound and look terrible, and that's not the point. 